There is no one like you, Lord, in all of the earth. There is no one like you, Lord, in all of the earth. There is no one like you, Lord, in all of the earth. And we worship you. Oh, we worship. There is no one like you, Lord, in all of the earth. There is no one like you, Lord, in all of the earth. There is no one like you, Lord, in all of the earth. God, we worship you.
reflection I have to get lost in Cause you're my obsession
Hey, if you're just jumping on, we're just kind of abiding in the Lord for a little bit, ministering unto Him. If you have a prayer request, you want prayer, I want to encourage you just to drop it in the comments. Um, you know, I just want to remind everybody that's on, you know, no matter what you believe, Jesus loves you so much. It doesn't matter if you're a Buddhist or a Hindu or a Muslim or an atheist. Jesus loves you so much. And he wants to reveal himself to you, even tonight. Um, so most of what I'm going to be doing for the next little bit is just playing and, and singing over you guys, ministering unto the Lord. And I believe that the Lord wants to reveal his face to you tonight. So if you're watching and maybe you don't know what you believe, or maybe you've made it a point that you do not believe in Jesus, you don't agree with what the Bible teaches, I just want to encourage you just to hang out for a little bit. You know, like, I believe the presence of the Holy Spirit, if it's true, it's true, right? And the presence of the Holy Spirit is going to invade your space in the most wonderful way. So I just want to invite you to come and hang out. Just stick around for a little bit. I believe that Jesus is going to reveal his goodness to you tonight. No matter what you believe, atheists, Buddhists, Hindus, hey, you might even be practicing witchcraft right now. But I want to tell you, your, your spells and your curses won't work here. And Jesus loves you very much. And uh, if that's you and you're a practitioner of witchcraft or you're in an occult community, stick around anyway, because my God loves you. Jesus loves you very much. And he wants to know you and he wants you to know him. So just abide with us for a bit, yeah? the Lord wants you to know too whether you're watching this live or you're watching the replay that he wants to remove your shame Jesus doesn't want you to carry around shame he wants to forgive you of your sins he wants you to let go of your old life and take hold of his life take hold of the life that's in the trinity that there's a better way you know so right now, if you have something that you just need to confess before the Lord, maybe you've never been, quote, saved, you've never given your life to Jesus, I want to encourage you right now, ask Him into your heart. Say, Lord, I want all that you have for me. I want to be a part of a family, a global family. And the fun part is, and you know... <laughs> We usually don't tell people until later, but you were always a part, you know? You were always included in Him. Because you can't be separate from Him. You just can't. You can be separated from Him in your mind, but it's impossible to be technically separated from God. But anyway, if you've never given your life to Jesus, now's the perfect time. It's a wonderful time. It's a great night to do so. And, uh, you know, he's not like our earthly fathers. You know, everybody has an earthly father. and Some of them are great. Some of them not so great. But our heavenly father is perfect. He's perfect. And when we see Jesus, when we look at Jesus, when we read about Jesus, he's the perfect image of the perfect God. When we see him, we see the father, right? So the Father's not hiding behind Jesus. When we look at Jesus in the eyes, when we look at Jesus in the face, we see the Father, we see His likeness. So if you've never given your life to Him, tonight's the perfect night, and you will not regret it. You won't, I promise.
maybe you're a believer and you've been a believer for a while and you're just kind of weary. You, you just need some resting place, some space to just rest in Him. I just want you to get all that tension at the forefront of your mind. And I want us to just intentionally give it to Him. Say, Jesus, take this stress. Take this, this confusion. Take, take this stuff. Jesus said, cast your cares upon me. Right? And so right now, I believe there's an invitation for us to just cast our cares upon Him. And He will take them. We don't need to take them back. So just cast your cares upon the Lord. Tell Him what's bothering you and say, Lord, I put it in your hands. I put it in your hands, oh If you're just now joining us, welcome, welcome to what we are calling the Abide Tribe Online. Let's see if I can get this here. <laughs> okay. A little bit of a dimmer setting tonight. <clears throat> All righty. I hope it's not crooked there. Hope everyone's doing well. Um, Hey, if you have prayer requests, if you need healing in your body, um, we saw a lot of miracles last night on the live stream, and I am so excited to see what the Lord does tonight. Um, I really don't know what he's going to do or what he's wanting to do. I just feel like we should go after miracles again. And uh, if you need any kind of healing at all, I want you to drop that in the comments because it's not just going to be me praying uh, for you guys. I want us all to collectively pray together as one body, one unit. We saw uh, deaf ears healed last night. We saw, um, oh, what was it? The sciatica um, completely gone. Um, no pain after prayer. And so 
we want to go after some of that same stuff again. It doesn't matter if it's a cold or cancer. Jesus can heal it and he wants to heal it. It's his will to heal all those who are oppressed and set them free from the devil. Amen. So, um, <clears throat> and for those of you who would like to, I could also use some prayer. Um, still fighting some sickness and uh, we have revival starting tomorrow at the well. So, um, hey, if you're in the area, we have a three day uh, our revival nights going on at the well. I'd love to see you guys there. Anybody who's available. Um, revival broke out at my home church, the well of Maryville back in, I believe it was March. I think it started March 3rd where something crazy just happened. And we went every night for like, it, I think it was like months. And uh, we just we just kept getting more and more and more and, it, and and the glory just kept getting better and better and bigger and bigger. And so we just kept going. And then we had our Dunamis conference and we decided to take a little break because we wanted to make sure we had our strength up for the conference and we weren't wearing ourselves out. Um, and then we started back. And so now we went to scheduled revival. Uh, but, um, it's, it's going to be just as glorious, just as good, you know? So if you are free tomorrow and Friday and Saturday, and uh, I'm counting Sunday morning as well, like we are having revival nights at the well of Maryville and it's going to be something spectacular. And it's not because of talent or because of personalities or names it's because the presence of God lives within his people uh during our when revival broke out we saw masses disappear off of people i personally prayed for about 3 ladies uh sporadically different times that got their eyesight back um we had one lady that actually left her glasses at the church cuz she didn't need them anymore <laughs> cuz her eyes got healed uh, we had another lady where, you know, I jumped off stage after, you know, saying in the microphone, I think that God wants to heal eyes tonight. I went up to this uh, group on the side of the stage. I just jumped off the stage and started laying hands on people's eyes. And as soon as I took my eyes off of the second person, uh, she she starts gasping. Like, and I, I thought that a demon was starting to manifest, but it was actually that her eyes were healed and she could see. She, she had eye problems and, um, it was, she wasn't completely blind, but she needed healing and she got her healing and she was just absolutely floored that, uh, that actually happened. So, um, I, I think we're just going to continue on to some of the stuff we were doing last night. Um, I feel the anointing for it. I feel the releasing for it and the glory. So let's see what we've got here. Um, we have Mr. David needs healing from prediabetes and wife needs healing from degenerative disc disease and scoliosis. Okay, David, tonight is your blessed night. I was going to say lucky night, but we don't need luck because we have Jesus. Luck is demonic for those of you who don't know. Okay, so, um, you know, I think there's something so um, strong on the prediabetes thing. You know, I need healing from type one. So, a lot of times, like, we'll see, like, progress or healing in other people for the thing that we need. So I'm going to loose that over you, man. Like, I just, we loose correct blood sugar in the name of Jesus. Right now, Holy Spirit, I ask you to do what only you can do. And, and even the thing that I need, I pray that you'd supply it for both me and my brother David right now. That you would just take care of that pre-diabetes. And we just curse diabetes right now. We command it to get out of his body. We thank you, Lord, for full and complete healing. And, and David, I don't know if you check your blood sugar regularly or if you kind of know where you're running or where you're at, but if you want to check your blood sugar and see if there's any progress and check on that. And also, we just lose healing over his wife. We command all degenerative discs to line up right now in the name of Jesus. Be healed. Be loosed from all infirmity now in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for full and complete healing for all of these things. In Jesus' mighty name, we curse scoliosis. We command scoliosis to leave his wife now. Thank you, Jesus, for full and complete authority over all disease that your people have, that your body has. And guys, just so you know, if, if you don't know me, if you're new to this kind of thing, I don't believe that I'm special. I don't believe that I have a special power that other people don't have that believe in Jesus. Um, I want us to go after these things together. So... Wendy says, prayer for my friend Zoe with pelvic cancer to be gone. Okay, we just loose 
healing, healing, healing right now over Zoe. We command all cancer to go now in the name of Jesus. Guys, we have seen masses disappear, okay? This is not a big thing for God. He can do whatever he wants. You know, he can grow out limbs. He can He can make cancer go away. He can make the tumor fall off of people's bodies. So right now, we lose healing over Zoe right now. Healing. We command pelvic cancer to go. Be gone right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Whoa. Thank you, Lord. Okay, anybody else here in the comments, just drop your... <clears throat> drop your the thing that you need healing for and then also extend some healing towards me. I'm telling you, there's something so powerful about when we step out in faith um, for other people, for the thing that we need ourselves. I I've seen it happen so many times. You know, if you didn't watch last night's live stream, you know, I shared a little bit of my story about how, you know, I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes when I was 16 and of course, I believed in supernatural healing. I had seen it happen at, with my own eyes at my church. And so, I'm, I mean, stuff you couldn't deny, like like people getting out of wheelchairs and carrying their wheelchairs on stage and bald people growing hair like instantly. Like I saw it. I watched it happen. So I knew it was real. And uh, so I told everybody I'm I'm going to be healed, which I'm still contending for. But I said, if I'm not going to get healed right this minute, right now, then someone else has to. Somebody else has to because I know it's true. I know it's real. So I went to the streets and I started praying for anybody and everybody that would let me pray for them. And I saw crazy miracles. I saw crazier miracles for other people than even what I needed. And, you know, I've been healed of other stuff. Like I've experienced supernatural healing with other things. But I'm still contending for type 1 diabetes for uh, full and complete healing. So, um, I mean, I've seen crippled hands completely restored. Like if, if you want to hear some of those stories, you can go to my YouTube page. I do, um, these stories, uh, they're called stories from the glory where I document some of those and kind of retell them. Uh, or you can just go watch, uh, the last live stream past this one. So <laughs> David, amen. We're believing for that for you as well. We loose it. We'll, we'll give you some of the anointing. <laughs> yeah. Amen. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Anyway, there's something really powerful that happens when we don't get discouraged when something doesn't work out the way that we think it's supposed to. And uh, for me, that was healing from type 1 diabetes. I would have loved to have been healed uh, when I was 16 and I'm now 28, still battling it. But I have the victory in the name of Jesus, you know, still contending for healing. But I see crazy miracles. I... I see deliverances happen every day. That's something I do. I travel the world, uh, not just doing these things, but teaching others how to do them, how to do deliverance, how to cast out demons, how to uh, pray for the sick and things like that and see results. So, okay, we have a couple more coming in. Okay. Hey, mom, good to see you on here. Uh, we need to pray for Alice for healing from cancer tumors. Okay. So right now, in the name of Jesus, Alice, whether you're on here or whether you're not listening or anything, doesn't matter. Jesus knows who you are. He knows your name. He knows who you are. And we just lose healing from cancer right now. We command cancer to die in the mighty name of Jesus. We command all that sickness to get out of your body right now. We thank you, Lord, that your blood covers all sin and all disease. He didn't, listen, guys, he didn't just pay for our sins when he died on the cross. He invited us into the life of the Trinity, right? And he paid for us to be set free from our disease, right? So if you need healing, that was something that was paid for on the cross. Now, of course, there's all kinds of stuff that we don't understand why it does or doesn't happen sometimes. But it, do, it, it we should go after these things. We need to go after healing because Jesus said... In my name, those who believe, signs, wonders, and miracles will follow them. In my name, they will heal the sick. They will raise the dead. They will cast out demons. They will cleanse lepers. We've seen crazy stuff, and we're going to continue to see crazy stuff. And, you know, maybe you're a believer. Maybe you're a Christian, and you're like, I've never seen any of that. I've never seen the sick healed or the dead raised or demons come out of people. And frankly, I think that the guy talking is a heretic. <laughs> hey, it's totally okay. Because you know what, if I had never seen it in my life before either, then it, I would have questions too. 
But I'm telling you, where there's faith and where there's understanding, these things begin to happen. This this is normal life for me and my friends and for those that uh, we're around. We see this stuff happen and we talk about it, we preach about it, we teach about it, you know? And a lot of people stay away from that kind of teaching and that kind of anointing and understanding because they don't understand it. And sometimes even their leaders, uh, they, they, they are nervous to let people get around them because what if they're actual heretics? What if they're actually teaching something wrong? And you know what? I get it. I get that. But, um, if you stick around long enough, you'll see that we're, we're not doing anything outside of what scripture teaches. We're not doing anything outside of what Jesus empowers us to do because we want to learn to flow in his grace. So, <clears throat> okay. Dwayne says, my infant son has hemangioma. Hem- I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, on his right eyelid that continues to grow astigmatism in both eyes. And they are worried about the hemangioma causing blindness in the right eye. Okay. Dwayne, Guys, let's just bless Dwayne right now. Just You can lift your hands and just agree with me over the screen. We saw crazy miracles last night. We're going to see some crazy ones tonight, okay? Right now, in the name of Jesus, we command that thing, whatever that the name of that thing is, we don't even have to know. We lose glory. We lose power and authority over that thing right now. It cannot stay in his body. We curse that astigmatism right now in the name of Jesus. We just lose the blood of Jesus over his son right now, that he would be fully and completely healed from his head to his toes, both his eyelids right now in the name of Jesus. Dwayne, if you're around your son, I want you to go and check if it's still there. And I want you to be authentic if it is, okay? No worries if it's still there and if nothing has changed. But go and just check and see if anything has changed. We lose healing, healing, healing over his son right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We just command that thing to go. Go, go. And we say no to blindness. We cancel the assignments of the enemy over his son's life. We break that that assignment of every demonic spirit that's come against his body. Right now, we break it in the name of Jesus. Let us know, Dwayne, if if you can tell if anything's different. Okay, let's see here. Okay, Miss Misty. Okay. Hey, you were on last night. Very cool. Okay. So lupus and pleurisy. Yeah, that's not fun. Yeah. So I guess the lupus causes the pleurisy, right? Like, like for those of you who don't know, who don't know, pleurisy is where air gets trapped between like your chest wall and your lung and it can make breathing difficult. And, uh, it, it, I guess it can make it worse um, with the cold and the heat is what Misty is uh, sharing with us. So, uh, Misty, if you can share with us, tell us if it's hurting you right now. Just give us a yes or a no and, and give us a level of one to ten where it's at in the pain. So, um, and it says, she says it attacks her nerves. Okay. So tell us, is it hurting you now? Can you feel the pain in your body? And tell us from one to 10 where that pain level is at. And as soon as we get that response, we're going to start to pray because we're going to watch this thing go. We just bless everybody else too right now that's watching live if you need healing. We thank you. Okay. Okay. Dwayne says, yes, still there. However, I feel his presence through these prayers. Come on. All right, <clears throat> we'll continue believing and interceding for Dwayne. Hey, if you're watching, just declare this with me. If, if you uh, are feeling bold tonight, just say, in the name of Jesus, we command full and complete healing over Dwayne Davis's son and Cindy Davis's son. I believe it's Cindy that's on there right now. We command, and just repeat that after me, we command by the authority of Jesus within the people of God, within his family, we command all growths to go now in the name of Jesus. We command astigmatism to leave his body now in the name of Jesus. 
Ofreki taraba sanse heleklinara mosot solokle heki nerele. Amen. Come on. Okay, Miss Misty, if you're still with us, um, I, I did not see your response, but we're just going to start to pray because we're going to see that thing go tonight, okay? All right. Lupus and pleurisy. We just command right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Okay, there, there we go. The middle of her chest and into her back. Okay, so right now, we just loose. Whoa. Healing. Healing. Let the fire of Jesus come forth in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that you would cover her with your blood. That all pain, get out. All pain, go now in the name of Jesus. All pain, get out now. All pleurisy, get out now. All lupus, get out now. We break your power. We break the curse of lupus right now in the name of Jesus. Break, break, break. Right now in the name of Jesus. Break. Guys, as things are changing in your body, I want you to drop in the comments what is happening. I don't want you to manufacture anything. If nothing's happening, don't, don't drum it up and be like, oh, I'm healed. Like We can claim that in faith, but we don't want to give that as a testimony until it's actually making uh, manifest in our bodies, okay? We don't want to embellish what the Lord is doing. We just want to let him do what he's doing. So if there's something changing in your body right now, those of you who are receiving prayer and those of you who are just watching, whether it's live or whether it's on the rerun, because, you know, the anointing's still the same, the glory still the same, the presence of the Lord is here, regardless of what time it is. Um, let me know what's happening in the comments so we can know. Last night we saw all kinds of stuff happening and it was super crazy. And we're going after some of the same stuff tonight. So we just lose healing, healing. Healing in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy, holy, holy. Jesus, you are worthy. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> oh, Jesus, you are worthy. I want to read a little bit. I just feel the drawing of the Lord to... Uh... Whoa. Wow, Misty. Um, I want to read a little bit, <clears throat> just kind of over you guys, for those of you who are believing for healing, and even emotional healing. If you need emotional healing, just receive this too. I mean, the presence of the Lord, like, He's not waiting for me to to do what He's going to do. We don't have to wait for a man to give permission, right? Like, we, we're just interacting with the the raw, authentic presence of the Lord, yeah? Okay. I want to read from John 9. <laughs> Whoa. This is uh, the one of the blind men that Jesus healed. It says, Now as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth, and his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was bl born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. Whoa. I want to tell you right now, sometimes things happen to us not because we've sinned, not because our parents have sinned, and not because of, you know, generational curses. Sometimes things just happen. And when those types of things happen, no matter the reason that they happened, Jesus gets the glory when those things go away, when we get healed of those things, right? When, when the light comes in and the darkness dissipates, whether it's in our bodies, in our minds, in our souls, in the spirit realm, Jesus gets the glory. So even though he's, Jesus is saying here, it wasn't his parents who sinned, it wasn't even him who sinned, it was that the glory of God might be put on display in him, right? That's, that's not saying that Jesus condones sickness, that God ordains necessarily sickness. He's just saying the glory of God is about to be made manifest in this man, right? So I want to encourage some of you guys, like some of y'all are thinking, and this was a theme last night too. Some of y'all are thinking, well, I'm sick because of something I did. And so therefore I don't deserve healing. And that just doesn't make sense. That's not coherent with the gospel. It's not coherent with the goodness 
of our Father God. It's not coherent with Jesus, right? Uh, I told the story last night of remember when Jesus met uh, the woman who was caught in adultery and they threw her down naked in front of him and they were about to stone her and they said, what do you say? And, you know, the, the truth of the matter was she was there because of something she did. It was her fault. And she didn't even, have, even really have time to repent. This wasn't time for repentance. She was like begging for her life. I, at least I would assume she was. And what did Jesus do? He says, he who is without sin, cast the first stone. And so I want to let you know that like, it may be your fault that you are where you are in, in some way, shape or form. I'm not saying that over everybody, but for some people it may be. You know, it's not healthy to smoke. It's not healthy to drink excess excessively, right? But I want to tell you right now, if you've done those things, I don't even care if you just, you know, lit one up. <laughs> like, <coughs> I want to tell you, <coughs> now sound like I just lit one up. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I want to tell you that Jesus wants to heal you, right? It doesn't matter if it's your own fault. Healing doesn't come because we deserve it. Healing comes because we have a good father. Because Jesus bled and died on the cross to, to, to buy us back from what we had sold ourselves into. Because we had sold ourselves into slavery to the enemy and Jesus won us back. And so part of when, you know, we were uh, bought back over by his blood, right? <clears throat> what happens is now we have access to everything that we don't deserve. Because we can't, you can't earn your way into the kingdom, right? We don't even save ourselves. Jesus came and single-handedly saved us. And so Jesus single-handedly heals us. Now, we can come into agreement with it. We can loose it. We can, you know, all that different stuff. But the point I'm trying to make is, it, it, even if it is your own fault that you are where you are, get that out of your head. Nobody deserves healing. Okay. Just receive it. He loves you. He wants to take care of you. He wants to heal you. Okay. So Misty says she's breathing better. <laughs> Come on. I just wanted to hear that we got some progress. Come on. Well, Hey, we're going to take care of the pain too. <clears throat> Jesus is going to zap that right out of your body. So right now in the name of Jesus over Misty's body, we just take a claim for the kingdom over Misty's body right now. All pain, you are trespassing. All disease, you are trespassing. Get out of this body right now in the name of Jesus. You have no place there. You have no place there. Get out of her body now, 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 in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And all of you who are watching, who maybe you're not believing for healing, or maybe you are, I want you to stretch your hands towards the screen too. And let's bless Miss Misty right now. We command all disease to get out of her body right now in the name of Jesus. All pain go. All lupus go. Go right now. All lung dysfunction go in the name of Jesus. And Holy Spirit, I ask you to just do what only you can do. It has nothing to do with a special power that we have. It has everything to do with the anointing that you bring to your people, your corporate body. Okay, Miss uh, Serena. <clears throat> okay, left side. Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Hey, well, there's nothing too big for Jesus. Uh, Miss Serena says she's believing for healing for her husband. Uh, he was born with his left side significantly smaller than the right, and his organs and the limbs are smaller, and his left arm has no elbow. Uh, wow. And he has developed uh, a hernia in the left side causing significant pain. Come on. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Jesus. Right now, in your name, they shall heal the sick. They shall raise the dead. They shall cast out demons. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Whoa. We call out the name Christopher. We just thank you, Lord, that he was born to know you, that he was created for a relationship with you. Not, not just, uh, you know, a talking relationship or a reading the Bible relationship, but an experiential one. And right now, we just loose healing over Christopher right now in the name of Jesus. Whoa, we ask for growth. Lord Jesus, you said, 
If a son asks for fish, he should expect to get fish. If a son asks for bread, will his father give him a serpent? No, he'll, he'll receive bread. So we ask you, Lord, to grow Christopher's left side. Do the impossible, Lord. We thank you, God, for a brand new elbow to grow in. Because, God, you can grow bone. You can grow cartilage. We've seen you do it. We've seen you do it. And we know you're going to do it now. We just lose healing over our friend Christopher right now. Over that family. Yeah, 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 yeah. Zotorakila nanamasan selakishake. And we need a joint. Whoa, strengthen the limbs. Lord, we ask you to just take away that hernia. Completely heal it right now. We thank you because we know that you can do it, Lord. <clears throat> we let go of control. And we thank you that you are who you say you are. And you can do what you say you can do. Holy, holy, holy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. No more hernia. Break in the name of Jesus right now. Uh, we thank you, God, for uh, a growth, the growth of his left side. Yeah, 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 yeah. Soto rasila nene. We thank you, Jesus, for joints where there were no joints to grow in. We thank you for new, whoa, brand new limbs, brand new organs, that you would enlarge those organs to the normal size in Jesus' mighty name. And... uh yeah, Miss Serena, keep us keep us updated if something is changing, if something is happening. We don't expect any kind of um, uh, embellishment or any pressure to, you know, hype anything up. We just want to know what's actually happening. So we claim that in Jesus' name. Let us know. All right. I want to share a quick story with you guys just to kind of build your faith a little bit. It may, it may sound like a smaller story to you, but it was, it was pretty wild for me. <coughs> Excuse me. Many years ago, and by many, I mean probably about four, <laughs> um, uh, I was getting ready for uh, church service one night and I was at my house and uh, my wife, you know, she, um, she did a lot of stuff with like veterinary type deals. And we had a cat in the house and uh, the cat had knocked a, um, a syringe or something from somewhere and the lid had come off of it. And, you know, it was laying on the kitchen floor and I was walking around like getting ready for uh, for church. And I, I stepped into that that uncapped syringe that one of the animals had knocked off the counter or something like that. And the syringe like this thing went up into my foot like, I mean, it was it was pretty, uh, pretty gnarly. It went in there pretty deep and I was bleeding all over the place. And I was like, you know, limping and I was, I was like, man, like this, this hurts so bad. And, uh, it, it was pretty, uh, I was bleeding all over the place. It was bad. And it really sucked because when I lead worship, I have a tendency to stomp with my right foot a lot. And so I was like, I'm not going to be able to stomp like normal tonight because my foot is in like a lot of pain. And as I was hobbling around uh, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and he said, give me 30 seconds of just pure faith. And I was like, okay. And, you know, when I stepped on this thing, not only did it go up into my foot, it actually pulled and yanked and like left a big gash. Like it wasn't just like a clean entrance. It was like it left a gash in the bottom of my foot. Like it was very visible. So uh, the Lord spoke to me and he said, give me 30 seconds of pure faith. And I said, okay, Lord. And I laid my hand on the top of my foot. And I said, in the name of Jesus, I command this wound to close up. I command the blood to dry up. I, I just command full and complete healing in my foot right now. And I looked and I turned my foot over and there was no gash. And the blood had dried up. It wasn't, it wasn't bleeding and there was no gash. I'm telling you, like the wound completely disappeared. And I was like, no way. Oh my gosh. And I, then I stood up and I tried to like make it hurt. Like I tried to step on it and there was zero pain, like no pain. Like it was like it never even happened. It was absolutely crazy. So I just wanted to build you guys' faith a little bit. Um, I mean, I, it wasn't a small wound. It was actually pretty big. And, uh, you know, the Lord is a miracle worker. And how many of y'all know that in the New Testament, in the book of Acts, no, sorry, not just in the book of Acts, uh, I believe it's actually in, I want to say Ephesians, don't quote me on that, but there actually is a place where it talks about miracle workers. 
Now, I, I'm not like, you know, trying to put a title on anybody and especially not myself. But we have to actually understand that God wants to work miracles through his people, through us. And that's something that I took a hold of because I was like, if Jesus says that I can heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils, that's what I'm going to go try and do, you know? Now, I haven't raised the dead yet. I know people who have, and they have proof. Like, that, I mean, I, I've seen it, you know, but I personally have not raised the dead yet, but I have tried about three times. And I haven't seen results yet, but that doesn't mean we stop. It means we persevere and we keep going. I have, however, cast out many, 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 many demons over the last five years. And I've seen many, many healings, like probably more healings because I more recently learned how to cast out demons. But if you're watching this and if you believe in Jesus, you have the power and the authority to heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out demons, cleanse lepers, and preach the gospel everywhere you go with the following signs and wonders. So God is, God is looking for people to take risks because faith is spelled R-I-S-K, where there is no risk taking, where there is no possibility that you could get it wrong. There is no faith. And so I want to encourage you guys tonight, maybe tomorrow, whenever you get up, whenever you're, you know, going around town and you see somebody in a wheelchair, just you don't have to go over and start yelling in tongues at them and all this different stuff. Maybe just go up to them and be like, hey, my name is so-and-so. Do you care if I pray for you? Like, I believe that God heals and I, I would love to just pray for you. Would that be okay? And if they say no, say, okay, no problem. And just move on with your day. But if they say yes, oh my gosh, you just got in. And it's time to lay hands on them and command. Don't, don't ask God to heal them, okay? Command their bodies to be healed because Holy Spirit lives within us and Holy Spirit wants to be let out of us, right? He, he wants to be able to manifest himself through us. So the reason I say don't ask God to heal them is because you will see almost no results by saying, oh Lord, if it be your will, please heal this person. I, I don't think I've ever seen healing happen that way, ever, not even once. I have instantly seen results when I say, in the name of Jesus, I just command life in these limbs. We command all pain to go. We command these things to happen. Now, we're not commanding God, okay? I don't want to, you know, cause misunderstanding. We're not commanding Holy Spirit, okay? We're partnering with Holy Spirit and we're loosing the glory. We're loosing anointing. We're loosing power. So let's practice and then we'll wrap up for tonight because it's getting a little late. And uh, uh, I want to uh, thank you guys for taking time out to be a part of the Abide Tribe online. We're going to get our uh, streaming platform up and ready here soon to where we'll be able to stream not just to this personal page, but to the Abide Tribe, to YouTube, to um, uh, all, all the things. There's, there's many pages. But uh, I want to thank you guys for being a part. We're going to start doing these regularly and doing some regular teaching on these. But let's practice on ourselves. If you have pain in your body, if you have something in your body that needs healing, right now I want you to lay your hand on where the pain is or where you need healing to occur, okay? So if it's cancer, wherever the cancer's at, lay your hand on it. Lay your hand where it's at. If it's a headache, lay your hand on your head. If it's your eyes, you need healing in your eyes, do this right here. I don't know, something. And what we're going to do is we're going to say, in the name of Jesus, I command X, Y, Z, whatever you need. I command healing to flow into my eyes, into my nostrils, in, like into this tumor. And I command the tumor to die. I, com I command diabetes to leave. I command my pancreas to come alive right now. In the name of Jesus, we loose the glory. Whoa! We loose healing anointing right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Whoa! We thank you, Lord. So, okay, now, if it's chronic pain, I want you to command the pain to go. Command the pain to get out of your body. And then, as soon as you're done commanding, as soon as you feel that shift, I want you to try to make it hurt. I want you to bend your body in a way... <laughs> That would make it, that would trigger the pain and see if it's still there or see if it's lessening, see if it's going down. Because pain responds when we command it, okay? Because if you're a believer in Jesus, pain does not rule and reign in your body. Jesus does. So go ahead and see if you can make it hurt. 
make make it do something you couldn't do before. And then drop in the comments if something has changed. Drop in the comments if it's 100% healing or if there is a gradual healing happening where the pain is lessening, where something is happening, okay? We just lose healing right now. <coughs> in the name of Jesus, more Lord, more Lord. Yes, Jesus, we thank you that your glory is being made manifest in your sons and your daughters. Holy. And hey, if you're watching this on the replay, it's still fresh. It's still good. Okay. It doesn't matter if, um, you know, you're catching the replay. Healing is healing. Jesus is a healer and he's a permanent healer too. So we break the power of the evil one. We thank you, Jesus, for full and complete authority over all of these things. We command, we bind up any and all demons that would dare stand in the way of these healings in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Holy. Holy is your name. Holy is your name. All right, gang. It's been good hanging out with you guys again. Um, I hope to see a lot of you guys tomorrow at the well. Uh, we start at 7, but if you want to get there at 6.30, get there at 6.30. <laughs> Um, I believe we started at 7. We used to start at 6.30 for these revival nights, but I believe we went back to 7. So I uh, hope to see you there. Um, come and see what God is doing at the well, because it, it is something supernatural. It's something uh, that's out of the ordinary for most American churches. And I don't mean to sound offensive when I say that. I'm just saying most of the American church is not well acquainted with, uh, you know, true revival. So um, I'm not trying to glorify my home church. I'm just saying, just come and hang out with us. Just come and have a good time. If you like dancing during worship, we have plenty of space to do that. If you like, you know, flagging, we have flags. Um, just just come and be yourself. Hope to see you there at 7 p.m. Uh, I will be getting out our Abide Tribe in-person meetup dates here hopefully in the next few days. So be on the lookout for those. If you don't follow the Abide Tribe page on Facebook, go look it up. Just type in the Abide Tribe. Uh, it should have like this symbol that's got like some arrows and stuff on the um, profile picture. Go and follow that page and keep up to date with when we're going to um, when we're going to do some in-person events. So bless you guys. Hey, if you received any kind of healing, anything has shifted or changed. We saw a ton last night. Uh, you can see some of the testimonies on my personal page that's been posted. Uh, I know Kayla uh, saw some healing in her daughter. Um, we saw another that was healed. I believe her name was Deborah. That sciatica was completely gone uh, uh, from the live stream last night. So and we saw a lot of other stuff too. So go and check those out. And uh, we'll do these uh, on the regular. And I hope to see you guys again soon. Thank you guys for joining. Uh, we'll see you in the next little bit.